In this video, what I want to do is cover the main things that you need to know when finding the domain of a rational function. So if you have maybe a test coming up, um, maybe tomorrow, or you just need a quick little review of how to find the domain of a rational function, these are going to be the main things that I want you to know. Number one is just to set the denominator equal to zero. So there's a lot of things that go on with rational functions, sometimes or rational expressions, whatever you want to say. Um, sometimes the problems can look you know, pretty intimidating. But if there's one thing that I want you just to focus on is just to set the denominator equal to zero, all right? And the reason being is because whenever your denominator is equal to zero, your function is going to be undefined, all right? So let's just kind of look at an example. Let's say I have y equals one over an x plus one. All right, now remember, you cannot divide by zero, right? So what we need to do is find the values that make our denominator equal to zero. Now, obviously you can look at this one and say, hey, this one's pretty easy, it's negative one, right? But the thing about this is the reason why this is so helpful for finding the domain is, you know, the domain is the set of all values that makes our function defined. Well, there's two ways we can go about it. We can find all those values or we can find the values that are not in the domain. And when we're dealing with a rational function, the only values that are not in the domain are the values that make your denominator equal to zero. So in this case, I can just say x plus one, you know, is equal to zero, subtract one, subtract one, x is equal to a negative one. So this is going to be my value, x is going to be the, I'm sorry, and when x equals negative one, that is the value that makes my denominator equal to zero. Therefore, that value is not in my domain. Now, there's a couple different ways we can kind of write the domain here, right? I could say the domain would be all real numbers such that, you know, x cannot equal a negative one, right? But the whole idea of um, setting your denominator equal to zero is defining the values that um, make your denominator equal to zero. And even though this one was like rather easy, we could also, you know, kind of work into a little bit more tricky, right? X squared minus one. So again, you know, set it equal to zero. And then now just use your inverse operations or factoring. Now I prefer to use factoring. However, if you use your inverse operations, that's fine. Just make sure when you take the square root of both sides that you include plus or minus one, okay? Because the thing is there's two solutions there. If you did this by factoring, if you factor this into an X minus one, times an x plus one, you would see now that, oh, there actually are two solutions. So now I could use the zero product property. So x minus one equals zero, x plus one equals zero. So therefore x equals one and x is equal to negative one. Now, again, remember, these are not the values that are in your domain. These are the values that are not in your domain, right? So it's important to understand these are the values that make my denominator equal to zero. So therefore these are the values that are not in my domain. All right, so again, in like, um, you could also just write the domain all real numbers such that x cannot equal a plus or minus a one, all right? Now, the reason why I like using factoring is because, you know, sometimes we can also get into more tricky examples, right? So we can have an x squared minus a two x plus one. And again, it's just a little bit more an extension of factoring. Now, obviously guys, there's other like domain restrictions that we can focus on, like especially if there's something in our numerator that has a restriction. But the main thing, the, the most common restriction that you are going to be exposed to is going to be um, when the denominator is equal to zero. So you can use just inverse operations, or you could also use factoring to go ahead and solve that, at least when you're dealing with a quadratic. So in this case, I'll just set my denominator equal to zero, right? I can factor this. This is actually going to be an X minus one quantity squared is equal to zero. Take the square root of both sides. I don't really need to do plus or minus with zero. So I have an X minus one is equal to zero, x is now equal just to a positive one. So my domain in this case is gonna be all real numbers such that x cannot equal a positive one, right? So again, when you set the denominator equal to zero, this is again, this is a very important thing. What the values that you find, the values that you solve for are the values that are not in the domain. So a lot of, you know, the notation is, you know, solving x equals this, but when you write the domain, those are gonna be the values that are not in the domain, okay? So sometimes it's kind of tricky with a little play in the words, but it's really important for you to understand that. Now, the next thing I want you to understand about finding the domain is a lot of times when we have to simplify something, we get a whole, right? But I want you to understand that wholes are also discontinuities, okay? So just because something gets divided out does not mean it goes away, okay? So wholes are not in the domain. And what I mean by that is again, they're discontinuities, all right? So let me go and kind of show you like an example here of kind of an explanation of what I mean here. So if I had an example like x squared plus four x plus three divided by eight x plus three, okay? Now, 
do not make this mistake. Please, please, please do not make the mistake. Oh, the threes divide out, right? And X's divide out. And then I'm just left with like a four X. Don't do that. Okay. Remember, we can only simplify, we can only apply the division property when terms are going to be separated by multiplication, right? So we can factor this. We can actually factor our numerator into a X plus three times an X plus one. And that's going to be all divided by an X plus three. Now I'm just going to put it in parentheses just so you can see how everything is grouped together. And I want you to see in the numerator here, these are separated by multiplication. Okay. Now these are going to divide out. So you are going to get a simplified function or a simplified expression as an X plus one. However, I want you to understand, remember, go back to that original tip, like set your denominator equal to zero. What is the first thing we need to underdo? Set the denominator equal to zero. So we understand the values where our function is not defined. Our function is not defined at negative three, right? I mean, obviously you can like X plus three, you know, add it in there if you need to, but it's like, you know, I think you guys would agree. You can just say, oh, let's set it in there. X plus three equals zero. So you can subtract a three on both sides. X equals negative three. Okay. So that value is not in the domain. Okay. So it's very important for us to understand that. So even though the X plus threes got divided out, that just tells us the type of discontinuity that is now called a removable discontinuity. So it's going to produce a whole when we look at the graph. So my simplified answer is, or a simplified expression is X plus one, right? And you could still say, you know, it's equal Y or whatever may be the case, but you say X cannot equal a negative three. Okay. So that is going to be my undefined value for, uh, on that expression. And I was going to take a look at like another example. What if I had like an X minus three? over a X squared minus two X minus three. Okay. So again, do the same thing, right? In this case, you can see, we can factor out my denominator. So therefore that's going to be an X minus three all over. Let's see, this is going to be factored out to a, um, let's see, what would this be? This is going to be a X minus three X plus one times an X plus one. Now in this case, I'm not going to put parentheses around my numerator. You can, but you don't have to. Again, they're separated by multiplication. So that is good, right? My terms divide out. So therefore I'm going to be left with a one over a X plus one. Okay. Now, again, going back to my same ideas here, like you can set the, um, you can set the whole denominator equal to zero. And what you're going to get is two values that make my denominator equal to zero, right? If I set the factored form X minus three times an X plus one equal to zero, right? I'm going to have X equals three and X equals negative one. I'm not actually going to separate it. I'm just kind of quicking up my work a little bit. But those are going to be the values that are undefined. Now, is there a difference in these discontinuities? Of course, right? The X minus three got removed. That's a whole. The X plus one is non removable That's going to be an asymptote. But again, in the spirit of just identifying the domain here, we have this function. And my domain, though, is still not going to be X cannot equal a three or a negative one. So those are still going to be two values. These are going to be the two values that are not in your domain. Okay. So again, just because something gets divided out doesn't mean it goes away. And last but not least, let's just kind of do one more example. So a two X um, plus a 14 all over a X plus seven. All right. And in this case, like the, you can factor out the two. So when I factor out the two, I'm left with an X plus seven all over a X plus seven, right? Again, those are going to divide out and that's going to leave me with a two, right? So if you think about it, you're like, oh, I just have a number like the domain, like what is the domain two or is it all real numbers? Well, the domain is all real numbers, except remember this X plus seven got divided out, right? So X plus seven equals zero X is equal to a, sorry, a negative seven. So my domain here is X cannot equal a negative seven. Okay. So it's very important for us to make sure that we, um, understand just because something gets divided out, just because it is a whole does not mean it is not in the denominator anymore, or sorry, it's not in the domain. Um, or sorry, it's, it's in the, it, it got like, it's in the domain now. And like, it got away. No, Dividing out is just going to tell you the different type of discontinuity. But again, set that denominator equal to zero from the beginning before you simplify so you can find the domain. All right. The next thing is kind of like comes into like a very common mistake that I see a lot of times with students um, when understanding the domain, right? So we talked about like setting the denominator equal to zero. Step one, you got to do that, right? Step number two, always simplify, right? Whenever we're dealing with rational expressions, we're simplifying, simplifying, simplifying. But just remember, just because you go to that simplified version, make sure you find the domain from the original problem, right? First, before you actually start dividing things out. And number three is just because something is rational does not mean it, um, it is restricted. So rational does not, um, um, rational does not mean a discontinuity. 
Okay. So this happens all the time with students. They see like they get a rational expression. And they're like, oh, the domain is going to be, you know, there has to be some like asymptote or whole. That's not always the case. So x squared minus 4x, you know, minus 5 all over 5. Right now, some students might say, "Oh, divide out to five. Don't do that." Right? Um, our terms are not separated by multiplication. The whole purpose of me doing this up top here, guys, was to get our terms separated by multiplication, so I could divide them out. Nothing in this case can be separated by multiplication. Or I'm, I'm sorry, I can go ahead and factor this, but again, it doesn't really matter. Even if I could factor this, um, it's not going to help me out, right? If I did an x minus five times an x plus one, right? divided by five. It's still the exact same answer, right? I can't divide out these fives um, with anything because it's those expressions are, are what being multiplied, are separated by multiplication. And what I want you to understand is what are the values that make the denominator equal to zero? What are the values that make the denominator equal to zero? Well, there's none, right? You had to just have five in the denominator. So guys, this is really like the same example of me just multiplying by like a fraction, right? So x squared minus 4x minus five. So even though the problem is written as a rational like expression, you could just easily rewrite this as multiplying by a fraction. And hopefully you guys recognize that this domain is all real numbers, right? There, there's no not, there's no values that are undefined in this, in this example. Now, sometimes when we actually divide things out, students are like, aha, that's it. That's a whole. So therefore it that is going to be um that is going to be where there's an issue. Right, so they say, all right, we can simplify this. So they factor out a five, and they get an x squared plus a four x minus five. Uh, do I want a four, positive four x? Yeah, that still works. And then all over five, right? And you could factor that again if you wanted to. But again, they say, hey, the fives divide out. But again, the whole purpose, guys, like five is not a whole, right? Yes, fives divide out, but that's really just a scalar, guys. Um, that that's all that is. Okay, so it, like it doesn't even matter in this case, even if the fives divide, if you divide out the fives or not, like five does not make the denominator equal to zero, right? There, there is no variable in the denominator. So again, there is no restrictions in this case. But again, sometimes students just get into this mindset of like dividing and they're like, aha, that's it. And no, it's not always the case. Now, those are kind of simpl simplistic cases, but one of the more common ones that happens is when we have a problem like this. Students always want asymptotes. They always want holes, right? Now again, don't divide out the x squareds and the fives. Don't do that. Okay. We got to have factor things out. So in this case, students, you know, factor the numerator, but they recognize that, hey, they can't, you know, factor out the denominator. And then they say, all right, well, Ms. McLuggan said set the denominator equal to zero. So I get x squared plus five equals zero. They subtract a five on both sides and they get a x squared is equal to negative five. They take the square root and they say, ooh, remember plus or minus. So x equals plus or minus. And they say, hey, you can't divide square root of negative five using the real number system. And you're right. You have to use the imaginary number system. And they say, okay, well, my domain is all real numbers except for plus or minus i square root of five. And in general, that kind of sounds right. But like when we're talking about the domain, we're talking about the real numbers that make up our function. This is an imaginary number. So if we're excluding our imaginary numbers and we're only trying to find the domain of real numbers, it doesn't really make that much sense. So guess what? Whenever you have a do not... Um, if this is solved for the imaginary number system, we don't need to include it. Our domain in this case is again, also going to be another example of all real numbers. So hopefully these three tips are going to help you with your understanding of finding the domain of rational functions. And if so, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.